today's show. The Tamiya Mark IV 135th scale tank. We managed to get the paint on that this week, so we'll be having a look uh, how that video build's coming along. We had the live show. Big thanks to Ron for joining us on uh, Tuesday's live show. We'll be having a quick recap of the mayhem that went on with that one. The Rebel Massive 132nd HE111 Bomber, uh, absolutely fantastic one on that one. So we'll be looking how we're coming on with that. It's all coming together with all the glass work, photo etch on the external set and everything else. It really is a monster. Styrene filler, something I've been working on for a long time. Um, uh, didn't quite come off the way we wanted. So I'm gonna show you how you can make your own at home. Kit review, we've actually got this week the Mini Art 135th scale German tram car. This is a beautiful tram, absolutely exquisite kit. So we'll be having a look at that one. Plus we've got all the other news and gossip from the forum. Hello, welcome to Forum Models. I'm Philip Flory. Uh, funny week this week. It's a little bit shorter than normal. Um, as a lot of you know, especially if you watch the live news show, Hot Tub Gate, as it's now known, or I'm just in trouble generally. Um, we didn't get back until late Monday afternoon um, because we were away for the weekend. We had a long break uh, down in Cornwall, which is absolutely lovely. Um, basically came back, did a few orders, a little bit of editing, things like that. Uh, so I didn't actually do any uh, filming as such or work as such actually on the Monday. So Tuesday, it was lovely. So I really cracked on with this one. Now this is the Tamiya uh, 135th scale new Mark IV World War One tank. Uh, and for this one, we actually used the new paint sets, the new AK's paint sets, which I have to say, uh, considering this hasn't officially been weathered yet, this has just been using their modulation set, which, you know, we, we're gonna, we've covered a lot in the actual build. But as you can see, it actually looks really good just as is. It's nothing that, you know, sometimes you put down paint and before you start to weather it and really go through the motions of doing your own little bits, it comes to life. Well, this has literally just had their modulation set on it. The tracks have been put on and just dry brushed a tiny bit, nothing massive. Uh, and that's it. And if you wanted to do one clean off the bat, it works, okay? And this is the thing. I was never a fan of these modulation sets, uh, which is basically just dark and a light version of the base color, okay? But I have to eat my hat a little bit because a lot of people have come up over this week and they've been in the studio and talking and obviously they've seen this one and they've gone, oh, I love your weathering effect. I haven't done any. I've literally just painted it as per as you would, literally. So it's the base color right the way over. The shadowing I've done anywhere that's got anything that would cause a shadow, so i.e. Um, seam lines between the metal plate, riveting, you know, lumps and bumps, they've had it. And then I went around everywhere else, if you like, with the fadey color. So if you're talking of something clean off the bat and you're just going for that type of effect of, you know, very light weathering, if we say, you know, we say even light weathering, it gives it quite a nice look. And that's it. The tracks, as I say, is standard, their metal color, metal iron color Tamiya, and then it's had a dry brush with a little bit of silver. And that's it. I haven't physically done anything else to this yet. Yet people have thought I've done things to it. So technically it shows these have worked um, and they do look like they've been working really, really well. Um, the paint itself, during this build, I speak about it. I'm not 100% sure of it. I'm about 90% convinced that it's good paint. 10% of me tells me it's not model air. That's the only difference. Um, and it does say on here quite clearly, uh, it's AK's own factory and stuff like that. I think they're trying to distance themselves from everyone knows model air um, and things like that. So I think that's the trouble. Um, it definitely isn't the same. It does perform slightly different. Thinning it and things like that, it's a little bit thinner. It separates quicker in the bottles as well. So you need to keep them shaken and, and woken up and everything else like that. But generally, as you can see, we've really pushed on with this one. So we've got the decals on with this one um, and boom through the motions so technically this has now had a flat coat just over it just to seal it down so it's all ready for weathering and everything else now so really we can get onto the stage of which will be properly weathering it It'd be the dry brushing um, staining streaking oil streaks rusty streaks all those things on it then we're going to get a base which to be honest is probably going to be about the same size as this uh, and we're going to be working with plaster in the washes and various things really to bring it to life which is what I intend to finish this one off next week but off the bat out of the box that's how you would go at the end and it is really really nice it's a lovely kit and as I say I know they're back in stock in the UK as well Hannans have got them in now so for all the people who've been saying I can't find one anywhere that's where they are in the UK rest of the world I think pretty much okay but the UK they did dry up for a little bit um, I don't know if it's the Flory effect but it's certainly 
cause chaos with people trying to find the kit as usual. But no, go out, get one, have a go with it. It's a beautiful kit, beautifully engineered and all things like that. Um, as I say, Tuesday night we had the live show. Um, big thanks to Ron for coming to the live show um, and everything else like that. He thoroughly enjoyed himself. We did, me and Sid, and all the rest of it. Thank you for everybody who joined us. And um, yeah, thanks for everyone mentioning about the hot tub. For those of you who don't know, watch the live show. For those of you who haven't seen it or can't see it, basically I fell out of a hot tub, knocked myself out, wasn't good, but then it did involve a lot of alcohol, if I'm honest. So, although I don't think it was totally my fault, it was a medical condition. Apparently getting out of a hot tub and alcohol isn't a good mix as now I can testify to, definitely. But anyway, uh, speaking of the live shows, uh, next week we've got Hans is on uh, from the US. He's gonna be joining us live and we've got Mr. Shannon Steele. So he's gonna be up on the live show as well. So a big one next week. Um, myself and Sid will sit down to, on Tuesday. We'll have a meeting uh, Tuesday daytime and we'll work out what's convenient for us to do some of the live shows for the US uh, and for obviously Australia's as well, okay, for that neck of the woods purely because of the time zone. So not so bad the Australian one, it's just that the US one, we'll have to film it, I suppose, a Saturday afternoon or evening. So you'll get it sort of during the daytime uh, or something else like that. So that way everybody gets a, a bit of a shout at it, but certainly it should be a lot of fun. You can then interact, join in, ask us the questions live, get us to do stupid things and all the rest of it. So we'll crack on with those, but no, a lot of fun. Big thanks to Ron though for putting up with us this week and bringing the yummy cakes. Next up, we've got the Heinkel. Um, as you can see, the monster is literally to the point now where we're almost ready for paint. Um, as you can see, we've got the external photo etch set on, the glass work is all on and everything else like that. And we're ready to go underneath. So we're pretty much ready to get this into paint now. Uh, a couple of little bits and pieces I've gone around and adjusted and changed um, purely because I made a bit of a faux pas by putting the photo etch on the wrong side. I put them on the top of the wing instead of the bottom. Now they're all on the bottom as you can see and everything else like that. One point though we have to point out is that um, on here I talk about using styrene filler as a glue for doing clear parts and everything else like that. Loads of you have been asking about it over the last couple of weeks uh, about how I make it, what it is and everything else like that. So here we go. Okay, so filler, my new styrene filler, okay. A lot of you have noticed recently I had a bottle of this uh, floating around my desk. In fact, I've had various bottles over the last six months. Uh, this one's called Black Filler. Funnily enough, it's white. It was just a sort of code name thing for it. I was basically designing a styrene filler that could be used for everything uh, on your model, all right? Um, so you could use it for general filling, okay? So the perks of using a styrene filler versus a CA filler or your traditional putties, things like that, is that when you're rescribing it, for instance, you don't either come to a brick wall and like tear through it, uh, or if being a normal filler, it'll drop in and make a hole. Because it is styrene, it's just exactly the same. Perfect weld, okay, so it literally will weld up gap capabilities and all the rest of it, absolutely fantastic. So if you were watching things like when I did the tornado, inside that wheel weld, there's gaps all over it. I just gave this a coat all around there. It all goes back, it sinks in, brilliant. No problem at all, nothing else needed to it, okay. Wanted it, it to be able to be used on photo etch. So to be honest, it was used all throughout the hind build as well. That's that mysterious white glue I was using for putting down the photo etch, all right? I was also using it on the clear parts. So for this one recently, you've seen a lot of it used on here. Uh, as I say, we used it as a filler which we then rescribed and sanded over. We've also used it on all the glass work for a self-leveling uh, gap capability uh, and limited fogging, okay, for all around here. And obviously we used it underneath for various seam lines and everything else like that, okay? So that was the thing to it. The drawback to it is, and I'll be honest with you, the contents to actually make it are really are talking pence, okay? Um, but the actual cost of uh, shipping it around, uh, and it has to be in a glass bottle because obviously it's flammable, it is toxic, and it is everything you don't want particular products to be, okay? Uh, so from that point of view, it isn't worth me bringing it to the marketplace, or certainly not at this time. So the thing is, it was a case of a lot of people who said to me, what's in it and all the rest of it. Well, obviously, um, I'll be honest with you, it's like a secret formula, okay? I don't wanna give that all away exactly what it is because I know what will happen is there's some unscrupulous companies out there uh, will just go out and they'll manufacture it and sell it and they'll charge you a fortune for it when reality is it probably costs no more than 30 pence of content to actually make the stuff. The rest of it is in your packaging and everything else like that. So it's something I'd like to sort of keep under wraps and then later on, 
you know, perhaps it could be developed into a product if things were different, okay? So that is our mysterious black filler, as we call it, even though it's white, which is this stuff here, which I've had in a bottle, and this is one of the last incarnations of it, all right? The other way you can do it now, and because it's readily available, is to use Tamiya Extra Thin Cement. Because it's a hot action glue, it melts down things, things like that. And it's quite cheap now, because it's available in the UK for £3.50 a bottle. Okay, so this is the stuff um, you want. You can get it in most of your hobby shops now. It's going to be a readily available product as well. So don't let everyone go out panic buying thinking this is it. It's going to be available all the time, so don't worry about it. If you can't get it, obviously, in the UK or you're outside the UK, just have a look in Hong Kong. Any of the big sort of model shops, online ones, eBay, things like that, you can pick up a bottle there, okay? The other thing you're going to need is some styrene sheet, okay? You could use sprue, but to be honest, I find it doesn't work exactly brilliant with that. Styrene sheet is dirt cheap. You're probably talking a quid for an A4 piece of uh, 0.5 sheet. I think this is 0.25 mil, um, and uh, like that. And I've got some offcuts, which I tend to use. Got some strips and things like that. Then you're going to need a bottle to put it in. So, for instance, I've got a cleaned out glass jar. Always keep these things because I'll charge you two quid for one that we've all got. So just soak them in hot water. Just remember, you want to get the crud, and I have got a little bit in here still, out of the top because if that gets down into your filler, it will make a lump. Okay, so you don't really want that in. So you want to get that as clean as possible in there. All right. Or you can just use an old Tamiya extra thin pot if you've got one because you can use the brush, which is quite a handy thing like that. All right. Now, I'm not saying this is exactly the stuff we were making because to be honest, it does have its slight limitations from the stuff we were using before. Okay, the stuff that I sort of invented and came up with, the great thing about it is it doesn't fog clear parts, which was quite handy because you could just put it down. This will to a certain extent, okay? So, for instance, I've used the Tamiya one here uh, in testing for you guys, all on the clear parts for gluing this in. Now, the great thing about using this stuff is it is self-leveling to a degree, okay? You're obviously going to get a little lump, but it will, capillary action will flow and go off, and because you'll make it to a certain viscosity uh, or thickness, okay, that will depend on how far it travel. Obviously, if it's quite thin, it will zip off. If you make it a little bit thicker, it will track very slowly and it won't just run off into everything else. The great thing about it though is don't forget, because you've glued this stuff with like a weld action and it's styrene, it's gonna bite, it's gonna grip, and this is as strong as plastic around it. Whereas if you're using PVA glue, things like that, you might have a problem. I've also used it, this particular one, for doing all the photo etch work as well. It will stick it on. And I know what you're thinking, he did use something funny when he did other things. So quite frankly, he did it on uh, the hind build. All the photo etch was stuck down with this stuff. All right, my version of it, but it's basically the same, okay? Also, I did it for all the seam work, all the joins, everything, all the imperfections that you could find on the Tornado build. Um, and to be honest, it's been used on this. We used it for all the gap capabilities, for all the filling, the seams, and absolutely everything on this model. The beautiful thing about it, as you can see at the top here, when you get seam lines like this, this is totally smooth, nothing there at all. Because it's plastic on plastic, it welds together, it joins seamlessly, okay? So when you come to things like sanding and rescribing, it's as just as if you're sanding the plastic. There's no difference in texture or sort of, you know, hardness. So it's not like when you're rescribing, you come along and you use uh, CA glue, super glue, and it goes rock hard and you end up channeling through it, okay? And it's not like using a traditional filler where it's soft though and you end up putting a hole through it. It's great for that type of thing. You can use it as a very thick glue as well, okay? So for instance, if I get a part and I want a very nice secure join on it, I'll use this stuff, okay? So anyway, it's dirt simple. All you're gonna need is a glass jar. You're gonna need some, we've got our new bottle. Well, I'll we'll use a bit of the old stuff, okay? You're gonna need a bit of this. Now, your mixture and your ratios are all gonna depend on, okay, exactly how much you want to make, all right? So I'm just gonna do a little bottle in here, because to be honest, I've got gallons of it floating around everywhere. All right, so you're just gonna take a little bit out, and then all you're gonna do is add a styrene sheet in here. There's my little scissors. So you don't have to take it to tiny little chunks or anything else like that. All I tend to do is I'll put it into little cubes. I wouldn't try and scrape it and then put shavings in, because quite frankly, it won't take that long to deal with it. All right, so all you're going to do is put in about the half the amount that you've got in there in styrene sheet will make you a thick amount. But you're just going to start off with a general mix. So you're just popping these in. Okay. And from my point of view, when I do this, I tend to put it in until it fills up. Now, you are going to need more styrene than you think you're going to need because this will eat it. 
and it'll just turn it into milk. Then you'll go through the stages of, okay, it's milk, and then it will go into the stage of where it gets a little bit like cream um, and everything else. Now, depending on what you're gonna be using it for, would depend on the thickness. And from my point of view, I have got various bottles of it in various thicknesses. So, I'm just about coming up there now. One more bit, I think. Okay, so we just pop that in. Then we're gonna pop our lid on. Okay, we're gonna give, give it a little whiz right the way over. Okay, and then you just leave it. Literally leave it, okay? Then, after an amount of time, what will happen is you'll come up with something like this, okay? And this is it here, on here. Now, this is my thick one. This one's quite a thick, gloopy one. The other one I've got down here is a thinner version, and this is probably the same thickness as uh, an acrylic paint. So, if I just use my little jar here. Now, the reason this one is grey is because I've added paint to it, but you can probably see it's on here like this. So if I grab a little bit of plastic card and pop it on, as you can see, you can brush this around, okay? And it will self-level and you'll be away with no problems at all with it, okay? You can add on top of it, you can make big blobs of it, but it will self-level and smooth. And that is one of the beauties of this. Because it self-levels, it makes sanding really, really easy. So when you come to something like this, and to be honest, I've got sink marks in my props, all right, all we do, we're just going to come along and we've got here, probably could do with a thinner one, oh, okay. Um, you know, we've got here sanding, it's a little fine one, and literally we're just going to go over. And when you sand it, as you'll notice, you can't feel your sanding filler purely because it literally is it, okay? So, usual thing, you're looking for non shiny areas and it takes it out and it is beautifully easy to sand. It's not a hard thing to sand, all right? So literally you just come along, I'm just gonna sand them in, okay. So if you're thinking ejector pin marks, sink marks, things like that, this is a brilliant job for it, that clean up. Okay, in there, just like that. To be honest, we've really done the underside. We've got them absolutely fine, no problem at all. Now, okay, limitations to using it. Obviously, be careful when you're going near clear parts because the version I was working on um, was uh, didn't fog clear parts, okay? This will, because it's using it just like Tamar Extra Thin, but because it's thicker, you'll be more controlled, you can come along, you might be able to see on one of our cameras here. We've got here, I've got it pretty much a good dollop around the front here because it was in, but also I've used it right the way around all of these seams. I've used it for gluing all the photo etch to the inside and all the parts in there just like that. And also you might be able to see down here on the wings, all of this photo etch is put on with it as well. Now the great thing about it as well, if you get a squirty bit come out the side, a bubble as you push it down, you can just wipe it away or just use a little bit of normal extra thin and give it a brush over and it will do it. Now, the only drawback with obviously using extra thin as well, it doesn't quite have the, the capability of holding onto photo edge like our other stuff does, okay? But it will do roughly the same job. And by the time you've got a coat of paint on it, you'll be fine. It's just if you do need to remove it, it will ping off. It's just it doesn't have that quite bit of grip, shall we say, as other things. But you can mix it with a little bit of CA glue if you wanted to uh, and do it like that way. But all of these are put on with it. Again, the beautiful thing about it is when you push it down, it comes to the edges and it feels like gap all around the edges as well, unlike CA glue, which sometimes doesn't do that. But you might be able to see it. I think we've still got it down the back here. We've got it down here on the tail, just a little bit around there, had a little bit of a sand over, but again, because it is self-leveling and everything else like that, it makes it really, really easy. You might also see just down here, all of this was put down, literally a complete ring around it, and it hasn't even been sanded. Again, because it self-levels, it's not like a filler where you have to go around because you've got filler marks and everything else in there, you're absolutely fine with it. Uh, just keep it localized if you're getting near to clear parts. Don't go around pushing it around absolutely everywhere. But this is already starting to melt down. You can start to see the, it's getting a bit milky color in there and everything else, all right? But what you want to do is literally leave that for a couple of hours to completely go off. Once it has gone off, okay which we'll come back to that one a little bit later what you end up with then is something like this but obviously it'll be white 
Okay, and as I say, mine, this one's getting a little bit thicker now. And don't forget, the great thing is when it gets a little bit thicker, all you do, you come along with your Tamiya Extra Thin, and you're not gonna need much, so don't go sticking in potfuls, but a few drops in there like that. Liddy on, this one on, give it a shake. Mix that all up again. You're good to go, and we've got a nice runny one again, just like that. With my lady thing. All right, so when you grab it on like this, you're good to go. But as I said, the great thing about this is, if you want to thicken it up, you can either leave the lid off, or you're literally just gonna come along with your couple of lumps of styrene. Okay, chuck them in into your pot, just like that. Let them melt in and you can thicken it up or you can thin it or as I do, to be honest, I have a few bottles on the go um, and you can do them different colors. The reason that I put a color to it is because it's styrene, you can't see where it is as you're using it as a filler, okay? So for instance, when I've used it for these joints down here, as you can see, it's a dark line down there. There's nothing to feel, they're perfect, okay? But at the end of the day, I can see where it is. Yeah, if it was styrene or just, you know, certainly if you're using a white color, um, you're not gonna see where the join is, so it's easier for sanding, so you can see, like up here, exactly where all of that is, okay? So in some ways, you just add a little bit of color. Literally, two options, stick a little bit of pigment in it, that will do the color and mix it that way, or acrylic paint, to be honest, that's just a little bit of XF1 black, tiny bit, just add it in, shake it all up, and you're good to go, no problem at all with it. And that's it, and that is our styrene. So literally, all you're gonna need, a little bit of extra thin, okay? You could use other ones, as I said, but to be honest, the other ones don't work as well, okay? This is as close as I can get it to our formula, okay? Our formula uses an industrial type solvent, um, basically works the same thing, and as I say, apart from our stuff doesn't shrink as much as this, um, and there's a couple other little things, it doesn't fog as much and stuff like that, it's as near as damn it, okay? And for 99% of people, you wouldn't notice the difference anyway, all right? So that's it. So anyway, £3.50 for that. A quid for a sheet of plastic art, but let's face it, you can use it for other things. It's going to last you a lifetime. So really, for £4.50, you've got enough filler to probably last you a lifetime. And again, just remember, when you're using it, treat it like a filler. Give it time to dry. Give it time to cure. Drying times uh, for Tamiya Extra Thin, for something like this. Uh, this one down here will be completely touch dry in around about 15 minutes sandable and work on say in 20 okay you can probably get hold of this in the next five minutes and you'll find it's got a lump but the thing is usual thing if you've got like quite a lump on the top here I don't know how the camera can pick it up um, but it's got a skin but you might see this one already well there you go this bit down here is completely dry it's just the lump on the top that wasn't so already that one's dry and workable whereas something else but little drops of it like that dry almost immediately so perks of it are one it's self-leveling so no more having to sand it Secondly, it dries quicker than any other filler I know, apart from CA glue, obviously. Okay, thirdly, it's great to work on. So it's easy to sand, it's easy to actually do, um, you know, um, you know, rescribing or anything else like that with no problem. It's also a glue because you can use it as a glue. So if you're in a situation where, you know, you've got like a bad seam line, you can get to it from the inside, you can just put, run some of this in through it and it works as a glue and a filler all in one. Now I know I'm thus not teaching anybody to suck eggs. I know this has been around for donkey's years and everything else like that. It's just that this is a slightly new slant on it and everything else uh, and things like that. Using styrene sheet, which is pure, is slightly better than using uh, sprue. You can use sprue, you could shave it down and use sprue, and I know lots of you have, and we've seen it on our forum especially, had some great techniques for doing that, and it works, it, it is a great thing. It's just that if you're using pure styrene sheet, there's no contaminations in it, no nothing, uh, and it just, it, it just works a bit better. It makes a smoother mix and everything else, and for the sake of £4.50, let's face it, you can buy fillers that cost a lot more than that, and this will last you forever, or you can just do it, if you haven't got any extra thin, you've never used it before, trust me, you will love this stuff now it's in the UK. Um, just get yourself another bottle, take a bit out, and then you've got a filler, and this stuff together. The other thing as well, I do have to mention that if you are in a situation where you know, you've know you got it and you wanna smooth this out even more, if you just take some normal extra thin and brush it over, because it is it, it will eat into itself and you can smooth this over to get rid of. So where we have that hole we've made in the top here, we can just pop a little bit more of this right the way over the top 
and you can smooth it out. So on edges on, on like clear areas, obviously being careful because your capillary action, you can just smooth it off even more. So again, minimal sanding all the time. But you can probably see on the underside here, it's beginning to melt, it's all going gooey down the bottom. Okay, we give it another quick shake up. And you think, how long we've we been running now? A lot longer at all. Okay, but that's really starting to soften off down there and go for it. Just, it is that thing, you. it's very easy to make a weak mix and a thick mix, don't worry about it. Once you've got it to a situation where it's melted overnight, preferably, you'll look at it in the morning, it'll just be a nice level, smooth level down there. Then you can give it a move around and think, okay, I want to thicken it up, just add a couple more lumps. I want to thin it, just add a little bit more of the extra thin and you're good to go. So there you go, the new revolution. Hopefully you're all gonna be able to crack on with this one and do it and you're not gonna get ripped off by some unscrupulous company who are probably gonna charge you a fortune for this, doing this type of thing. So there we go, styrene filler. Just be careful when you're first using it, especially on clear parts because it will fog, okay? But if you make it a little bit thicker, you can keep it very localized. Uh, and if you've got a paint in it, you can see where it is because as I say, hopefully the cameras, I know I haven't gotten totally set up for this work today, but down here you might notice where you've got that gray, it doesn't fog anymore so it's not going to fog and continue to travel it will literally stay localized to those areas okay and that's the thing and to be honest i've used it for filler work because i had a couple of gaps around here as well so two birds one stone all done So there we go, that's actually using the styrene glue. Uh, and to be honest, I don't know if you guys can see it on that camera, there we go. I filmed that before we came on air to do this show uh, and it's all melted in there. It's like milk at the moment, so I'll say that's the thing, you need quite a lot of styrene sheet in there to do it. So it's better to go sort of less and then build up from there. I think that was rammed full of it uh, before we went through. So if you are making your own, that's the way to do it. It's dead simple, really, really. And that's how I worked. This entire bomber has used that particular formula for making it. Um, obviously part seven, uh, which is this is now covers really doing all the glass work. It's quite complex. It does all fit as long as you've got it all lined up. And I know that sounds a bit stupid, but it's one of those things. If you start like I did at the rear plate for this guy back here, get that in, glue it in rock hard. And then I did the system of having both these front parts together, then put them on in one. I found that was easier. Just it makes all the joining and everything else go in a lot easier uh, for getting it all in. But I've still got good access because I can still get in through the nose. I can still get in through the top windows and the side windows because they're an external fit. So they can go in afterwards, okay, to put those in. So if I did need to get in there to adjust anything, dust something falls off you know we've all been there i can still get in there to do it it's not so much of a problem but certainly the external parts are on there as you can see the photo etch which will be part eight for you guys and getting it into primer so for my job for next week for me will be to get this fully masked up get these nose parts on those glass tacked in with a little bit of tack and then we can get some primer down on this one and then we can work on the, the sort of, you know, the basis of starting to work through the weathering with it. Because it's quite big, we're going to have to do quite a lot of bleaching, quite a lot of washes, staining, chipping, and all those things to really bring this monster into scale. Uh, and that's the trouble when you're working really big, is to give them that scale effect. So you can put it in any background and not know what scale it is. That's the beauty of the scale effect. Um, something which has worked really well on this tank, because if you used to photograph it, I don't think you'd know what scale it is. You know, you're going to be assuming it's 35th, but it could be something else. All right, that's the same type of thing we want to do with that one. Probably gonna to have to do it in the spray booth because it's just so massive. I don't think I'll be able to do it out here. So I have to play with the camera angles for that one to get it in. Because of that, that's why I haven't done anything to the Ford truck this week. Um, not only did I run out of time to do it, but also it's now ready for paint basically. So I need to get the shell into the spray booth and do it because we're using hot lacquers with it. I don't just wanna be spraying it around the studio, quite frankly. I wanna get it in there so it can be drawn out, exhausted out, uh, and to get it out of the actual, you know, the, the atmosphere in here. I don't wanna be spraying out clouds out this part anyway. So there we go, part seven of that one is up on the site now. Part eight will be up early next week, uh, along with the actual the tank and the truck and all the bits and pieces for next week's show. So there we go. Right, next up, kit review time. Something completely wacky, something completely you'd never think of doing, but actually is probably one of the nicest kits I've seen this year.
Kit review time, something a little bit different. Today we've got Mini Arts 135th scale German tram car. Now we like to do something a little bit different every now and again, and this is definitely it, okay? And it's nice to see how the hobby is really diverse and, uh, and moving into different areas as well. So actually what we've got here, is the German tram car. Okay, something a little bit different. Now, I ha personally haven't seen this before at all. Okay, this is Rons, who was on the live show with us, who's uh, lent us this one for a review. But generally, working around the box, you see, we haven't got too much stuff on the box. Um, it's 2014, it's a brand new kit. Now, apparently they are bringing out figures as well to go inside this one. Uh, I'm led to believe it is around about 40 pounds as well, okay? So your kit number is 38003, all right? Now, the first thing you notice is that it is actually really heavy, okay? And I haven't been inside this yet, all right? And then straight away we've got a manual, but looking at that, we've got a box full of plastic. Okay, and I don't know what the part count on this is, but it seems to be very high. So, uh, in the little booklet, as we can see, we've got some very nice artwork on here showing the sort of all the different parts for the the paintwork. Uh, I've got the paintwork callouts, which is quite nice. So we're in Vallejo, Testers, Tamiya, Humbrol, uh, Rebel, Mister Color, uh, uh, Life Color and then obviously just the normal colors they are and everything else like that, and your decal placement as you're working all the way through. Okay, so looking through here, as we can see, you've got multiple sprues of the same, so it looks like we've got two A's, two B's. I'm wondering if it's because it technically it looks the same both directions, that's what it is, like two halves going together. Okay, so as I said, I haven't looked at these, I know nothing about them whatsoever, so we're just gonna skim through the instructions just to have a, a look-see, okay? So basically, working our way through, you're working on the floor, it looks like, and then the suspension for the tram. Um, we've got some of the beam work going through for the actual chassis and everything else. And I'm gathering I'm right. I hate being right. Uh, no, I don't. <laughs> but it looks like, because it's saying times two to everything that it is, you're going to build one end and then the other at the same time, and then you're going to literally push them together, which would be quite a clever thing, which you do. So there we go. So that's how that's going to work, and that explains why you've got two sprues of everything. Okay, then you're working on the internals. You've got internal seating, um, and then obviously the bench work, the floor work all going in. Then we've got the actual the doorways, uh, the windows and the halves going on, the doors themselves, um, obviously into the, the driver's cab door, things like that, the actual driver's area itself. Okay, and it does look very nicely detailed going in. And also the thing is, uh, Ron's not starting this one yet for a very good reason, is that apparently they are bringing out passengers uh, and a driver to go with this kit as well. And I believe they're probably gonna do other versions of it. Let's say something a little bit different. Glasswork going in again, um, and the lighting system on the front. Got some very nice details here, right way down to the door hinges and things like that. That's going on, the cab work going on the front. So you are literally building the train itself, or the tram, I should say. Okay, the roof work's starting to go on now, so we've got some nice decals as well uh, for advertising, I should think, and things like that. That's going on there. Again, more windows, lots of glass work on this one. Okay, and then going through and then in, and that's all being fitted to the top. Actually, it looks very nice, very straightforward build. Okay, then it gets complicated. So now we've got the actual the running gear itself, all right? So we've actually got uh, the wheels, um, the drives, the suspension, all of these areas going down onto here. And it looks like obviously you've got the motors as well being electric, those being fitted on. Again, to these bogies as well, they're actually fitting in very nicely. Lots of detail down here. Okay, you can really, looks like it's very nicely done if it transfers to the parts, which it should do, okay. Very good, going through all the way, nice little touches. Um, the little door braces themselves, beautifully done. The overhead, the power cable, or the whatever it is, the trapeze thing that goes up to the power. See, I really do know nothing about these. Okay, and then going through, then we've got the little, um, the signs, which are roller ones on these, brilliant. Okay, and then falling through. Again, very nice details, level of detail of all the hosing and the various handle, grab handles and everything for the outside of it, the way they're a separate part, not just molded in quite crudely. Okay, so that would be your actual, the tram done. Okay, then you're working onto the, the actual uh, little bit of track you actually get with it and the overhead wiring system. Again, very nicely done. I'm assuming this is gonna be your threads going through, making up your, your cabling and things like that. And then you're popping it onto the base with the overhead, the power lines running through and everything else like that. That does look really, really nice. 
<coughs> and then here, I'm assuming because this has got a cutout thing, this is what you're going to stick for the actual areas here, which is something a little bit different. So it's not an actual a decal. So I'll be a little bit careful with it, wrong, because it literally has got nothing on the back. So you're putting down paper, as it would be, I suppose. You know, you don't really need a decal. They would be thick paper put on there and stuck on there. So we've got some very nice oldie-woldie advertising uh, bits and pieces down there, all the way down to Coke look. All right. Very nicely done. It does look exquisite. Right, OK. So oh, what we have, which I wasn't expecting, is one giant bag just like this. Yep, sorry, Ron. Okay, so if we start here, this is your track area, and we do get decals as well. So I'll pop them, we can have a quick look at those just as we're here. So you've actually got the, the decals themselves looking pretty good. They look to be basically like a satin type finish. Nicely done. They're pretty close. There's not a lot of carrier film on those either. Pretty good. Okay, so you've got your base. So you've got various lumps on the top. I don't know what they are. Um, I don't know if they should be there. It's like braille or something. But you have got balls on the top of the cobbles as they work themselves around. I do like the cobble way. Very nicely done. As you can see it here, I presume it's because there's no there's no actual um, ejector pin to this, I'm wondering if it's like a type of vac form or something onto this, or it's just like heat pressed on. Because I say, it doesn't look like it's injected. It looks like it's sort of melted on, and perhaps these balls are something to do with the release, but you can easily sort of swipe them off and away you go. But generally, the cobbles all look very nice. They're very, you know, ununiform and everything else. Some are smooth, some aren't, everything else. And the track itself, which I'm definitely sure now, because you've got these balls all over it, which I assume shouldn't be there because they're even on the rails. So a little bit different. I must admit, I wasn't expecting that. Okay. So down here in the parts, as I said, we are going to get two of everything. So I'll try and keep it in. Okay, so just generally looking at it, first glance at all the plastic is very nice indeed. Um, I can't see any problems with that. It's very sharp. There's no release film. There's not a lot of, ca of um, flash on it either. In fact, there's hardly any flash whatsoever. The ejector pins, all very, very shallow, very nicely done. Uh, working our way through. So looking at some more of the closer parts, you know, these handles and everything else, they are beautifully molded. How well the camera can actually pick some of these up. But they are very nicely done. All of these. I must admit, that's uh, quite something. And even like these running boards, things like that. Again, but it's this fine detail work is extremely crisp. Very, very nice. Okay, so part two is part two. Okay, again, loads of sprues, but obviously it's a sprues of two halves. Okay, so you've actually got the front, you can see the lighting system and everything down here. That's really nice on all of that. That does look very, very good. Uh, the doors themselves, the planking work, very crisp and sharp. Again, these springs. Having never built a mini art, I must admit, I am impressed because it is beautifully clean, very, very sharp molding on all of this. Uh, right the way down to, uh, well, camera can grab them. We've actually got the uh, riveting and the metal plating around the door and everything else like that. They are very sharp, to the point of you can actually feel they're sharp as well. Okay, working our way right the way through. So again, no flash, no ejector pin marks anywhere that you'd worry about. The ejector pin marks are very, very shallow as well. There's no sign of stress or anything else getting them out of the mold whatsoever. Okay, so some of this little running gear and everything else like that, very nicely done. The bolting system, it looks what it is, got a nice texture to the plastic as well. So it's not just like one type of texture all the way through. This is looks like it's been, uh, you know, powder coated type of thing. Although I don't think it was back then, who knows? When did powder coating come along? Um, but generally, yeah, looking at it, I can't see any fault with any of this. It looks gorgeous. Very, very nice kit. And it's one of those subjects you would never ever think, oh, I know, I'm gonna go and build a tram. 
It's one of those kits that, you know, you would see somewhere, obviously Ron saw it at the show at Telford, and thought, oh yeah, that looks good. Um, I'm reviewing it, I think it's absolutely stunning. It's absolutely beautiful. Let's just put it up. Okay, so, thing for this one. Okay, we've got multiples and multiples and multiples in here, so I'm not sure what's what. Um, so what we'll do, we know that's a duplicate. So down in here, we've got the actual, the drive. So we've got the actual, um, the drive system itself, working way through the motor, the various parts, uh, a lot of this crispness. I tell you what, what really stands out for me to this is the crispness of all this molding. There's no flash anywhere at all, and yet these are very fine parts. There's no sign of stress either, which is amazing. Um, obviously the ejector pins are all around them, as you can imagine, you know, as you'd have to do, literally everywhere, but certainly you don't get anything like you get on other manufacturers, shall we say. Very, very clean, very, very crisp. And you've got this, um, this is the one I noticed that goes underneath. It looks like it's a plow system, stop you falling under the wheels. Again, very nicely done, all of that. Brilliant, I'm impressed, <laughs> literally very impressed. Okay, so we've got the little wheels there. This is why you're gonna get four of these, I presume, for all the wheels on this. How many wheels does this thing have? Must have more than four, surely. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, very good. But again, these small parts, as you can see, are absolutely exquisite. Loads of detail, loads of little bits coming off of them. No flash whatsoever, no stress marks, no miss molds, nothing. Absolutely beautifully done. So we're assuming they are all the same, which they are. <coughs> so then down here, right, okay, so this is this, um, the actual for the power line, uh, the, um, the, the little thing going up to that one. And again, beautifully molded right the way down to the little sphere on the top look, and then coming down. We have got a tiny sink mark, and this is where I'm really having to be picky on this, but there's a tiny sink mark in there, and that's the first one I've seen on this entire kit. So that just shows the quality uh, of this. It's really, really nice. So we've got two of those. Okay, so two of these as well. <coughs> I'll try and get this all back in the box later. All right, so we've got the actual floor system with this wooden paneling on the floor. That's really nice, very nicely detailed. As you can see right there, it looks a little bit shiny, but I think that's just a tiny little bit of release agent actually on the plastic, which is the first bit we've seen. Texture, obviously, on the roof, very nicely done. You've even got wood grain in the roof. That's how good this is. And I thought that was just part of the kit. Actually, I think it's supposed to be there, or if it's not, it's a very good job. But it does look like wood grain, actually, on this top, which is very, very nice. Just seeing if it's on the floor. Floor looks a little bit more generic, but certainly on there, it really does look the part. Very clever. Last up, the clear parts. We imagine these will be fine because literally they're on the floor, because uh, they're all flat. There should be just multiples of. So as you can see, we've got no distortion even through my very dirty cutting mat. Let's get a new one. Note to self, new cutting mat for reviews. All right. But again, nothing wrong with that at all. A little bit of hazing, perhaps around the edges. But again, now I'm being picky. Um, and because it's a tram, you wouldn't want crystal clear glazing. You would want it to have a little bit of character. You know, nose prints, hand prints on it. Okay. Again, very nice, all of those, beautifully done. As I say, if you can see through it, then you know it's good, okay? There's no distortion whatsoever. So, there we go, there we have it. The 135th Mini Art German tram car, or tram. I must admit, um, having uh, first seen it, you think, really? And not my bag at all. Having seen the kit, that's definitely something I would think, yeah, I could do one of those. I'd like to do one. It's something a little bit different, a little bit wayward, something where you can play with weathering um, to give it a more of a street look rather than battlefield or something else like that, or showroom as you do with a car. This is, would be just general weathering that anything would get, which would be something a little bit nice to do. But there we go. Apparently they are releasing a bit of a series with it. You can buy uh, or get hold of more track for this as well. So if you wanted to do more of a street scene, a diorama, be a large scale diorama at this scale, but hey, uh, but it'd be worth it. But as I said, the figures are coming out for this apparently later in the year. Not sure exactly when, but they are due out later on in the year. So when those come out, obviously you 
pomp them in there. But looking at it, you might be able to put them in afterwards anyway. But anyway, something a little bit different. So there we go, the 135th Mini Yacht tram car. So there you go, something really different. And as I say, it's one of those things, uh, you look at it and it's more like engineering. It's very much like doing the truck. It's more like building it as you'd build the real thing versus doing a model when it's sides of things and you're just putting halves together and stuff like that. Really, really nice. And it's one of those kits, as I said in that review, where I wouldn't dream of ever building one. I wouldn't go online and think, I know I'm going to look for a tram because I want to build a tram. Now I've seen one, I'm thinking if I was walking past and there's one there, I'd buy one, you know, because it's just one of those nice things to have, to do something completely left field, something a little bit different uh, to go through it like that. So as I say, if you want to pick up something a little bit different, you like your transport, things like that, that is a beautiful kit. And as I said, I do believe they're bringing out other ones, figures for it, extra bits of track and things like that. So if you want something a little bit different, that is definitely the kit for you. Okay, so catching up in the forum. He says, grabbing his mousy thing so I can uh, bring up the forum because I did have it all here at once. Um, right, first of all, we've got to mention uh, the Operation Overlord has now finished for the group build. This is the full group build that comes with a medal. It's going to come with prizes, which I've got to order this week. Uh, so we'll get them in for next week and everything else. Um, Sid is working on the end reveal video for this one. So you can blame him for that. He's going to be working on that next week. Um, so hopefully that will be up maybe next week, maybe the week after. <clears throat> I want to get all the prizes in here and the medal so we can do a big reveal for it. But very much congratulations to the 77 of you who've completed. I don't know what the conversion rate was on that one. Let me have a quick look down here. Uh, dee, dee, dee. Oh, sorry, I can't see it. It's been it's been done already. It's been pulled out already. So I'm not sure how many actually started in that one. But 77 of you actually finished the standard again. Absolutely brilliant. You've done really well. Every single one of you. So as I say, you're all going to get the full medals. There will be a little something which is being worked on at the moment, as I said, uh, and there will be prizes for the first three, which will be picked by myself uh, as we make our way, way, way through. So congratulations to you guys. We do have to mention that the next one up to start is a SIG, uh, and that's for the night fighters throughout history. So any type of night fighter, and that doesn't include next 16, SID. Uh, so anyway, uh, that is going to start on the 13th of December. So you've got, what, two weeks? Um, and that one will be starting. That's going to run to the 5th of April uh, and that will complete I do believe this year's group builds and SIGs and everything else like that which they've got quite a bit of um, because the next one to finish which will be finishing on the uh, January the 3rd no, sorry, January the 4th is the uh, Cold War Russian armor SIG that's going on at the moment. So you've got literally, um, well, three, four weeks on that one. We've already got four weeks on that one, haven't you, to push through. So plenty of time to get that one finished. At the moment, we've got 24 um, working on, but only five completed. So time to get a shovel on with that one, gang. Uh, we've got the Middle Eastern Conflicts group build starting in the new year. So that is the stirring up dust. Okay, we're going to cover a lot about it. I know we've had a lot of questions through um, basically anything in history, any conflict that's taken part in the Middle East, be it, you know, you know, BC uh, through to modern times uh, counts, basically. So you can put anything you like in there. And that's going to start on the 3rd of January and it's going to run until the 21st of June. So a nice big on one of that. Big group build, lots of things can take part. So you've got your naval, your land, your air, um, and infantry, anything else you want to put into that one. So something a little bit different for that. Um, and as I say, the rest of the year, we've already got group builds and SIGs coming on next year as we make our way through. Uh, one thing I've got to mention, everyone keeps on asking, and I'm trying to get there, but as I said about before, for the um, airbrushing courses next year, this year is completely booked. I've got two more courses to do this year, and then that is it for this year. Uh, obviously, I have a break over Christmas and New Year and everything else, and then we'll start back in January. Because we're doing more shows next year, I'm only going to do one course a month. So technically, there will only be 12 courses next year. I have got all your email addresses for everybody who's asked to be put on the list and everything else like that. As soon as I know the date, I will post them up obviously in here in the videos on the blogs we do it'll be on our Facebook page and obviously on the main site so as soon as I get there I will do it but all of you guys who put your names down get first dibs anyway all right but I know we've got a list of around about 20 odd people who want to do the courses I will get you in all right it's just that at the moment I don't know where I'm going to be and I don't want to turn around and say dates and then have to change them and and all things like that so that's the point with that one 
So that is about it for this week. Nice and short and sweet one. Um, next week, hopefully I'm gonna be pushing through with these big time. We can really crack on with the paint. Love gonna be working and weathering on something so big. So we're gonna be working on this guys and everything else like that. Do have to mention, I can do it quickly on air because I'm just forgetting it, but we've actually got the video um, build poll. Uh, where are we? So I'm just bringing that in now. Um, here we go, view results. So currently, at the moment, we have the Kitty Hawk Jaguar build is gonna replace this build. As soon as that one's done, I'm gonna be starting on that. To be honest, I have got a little bit of photo etch coming in for that one as well, I've ordered in. So at the moment, that's leading with um, 63 votes on that one, it's leading the way on that. And that's gonna be the, uh, the sort of medium build. For the quick build, which is a replacement for the truck, it looks like it's gonna be the 172nd new tooled Revel Halifax bomber. Okay, so that's the 72nd kit, because uh, that's leading with 34 votes at the moment. The Huey has only got four votes. Cool. But yeah, basically that's the plan. So as you said, what will happen is, once that has finished, so once this build has finished, I will remove the Jaguar Kitty Hawk, because that will come in and replace this build. I will then add a kit into that list and they all get zeroed and started again. Uh, and that's how it's actually gonna work from now on. So you guys will be picking which kits you want to see next. The bigger projects, i.e. the big stuff that I like to work on for the long-term builds, i.e. like replacing this bad boy, uh, I'll pick myself, okay? Because obviously there's things I wanna do with electronics. I've got a particular kit in mind to do LED lighting with. We're gonna do the big Airfix Typhoon as well next year uh, and things like that. So certainly from my point of view, I'll be picking out those kits. So don't panic you guys who are saying, you said you were going to do the Typhoon. I still am. I'm just doing it after this guy, okay? But I am I know I'm doing that one. I know I'm doing the other Typhoon. We're going to do both Typhoons, old and new. Uh, but the new one's going to have full LED working lighting system in it uh, right the way through, which we spoke about before with the Scale Magic lighting kit. That's going to go into that one, all right? And then from then, I'll pick big old kits because I want to do the Sky Raider. I'm going to do some nice things with that as well with the Trumpeter Sky Raider uh, for the big 30-second stuff. But it just enables me to then pick what I would like to do, you know, to keep my sanity, and then you guys can pick everything else and we can work our way through them all like that. So there we go. I'd say, don't forget the loot live shows. Um, I've been categorized them now. So technically if you click on one, it should link you to all the others if I've done it correctly. So for the guys who haven't seen it, uh, if you want to catch up with any of the live show, they're about three hours long. Pretty much they're a giggle. Um, there's always Haribo involved, which we've now still got tons of it. For everyone saying what happened to the Haribo last week, trust me, it's just over there. It's a massive pile. Uh, but yeah, so you can literally click on them and it'll play one after the other, which is say they're all three hours long now and I don't know how many's in the list. So there must be, I think we've done 11 proper ones now, 11 weeks live shows. And then before that we did the week long one and things like that. So uh, there's still plenty of time to catch up with those if you want to, if you want a sanity and everything else like that to go through that list, it's all there. So say click on one, you should get the player now that will play them all. Uh, for non-members, occasionally I'll be poking them up onto our Facebook page uh, and onto our YouTube channel as well so you can watch them on there as well. So there we go. That's it for this week. Uh, everybody, happy modeling. Take care until next week.